According to the 1990 case of Cruzen v. Director, Missouri Department of Health, severely injured patients have a constitutional right to refuse medical treatment and die. When interviewed, Professor Ron Cranford stated, we need to have a massive public education campaign to teach people about living wills. I'm Gina Jordan, and my job is Trust and Estate Administration. Part of my duties include reviewing with my clients um, different documents that they need in order for the bank to successfully um, administer their trusts and their estates. And often when we're recommending our clients see their attorney, um, we recommend they get their uh, trust documents updated, their last will and testament uh, current, as well as um, health care surrogate papers, uh, power of, of, powers of attorney, and living will. Officially known as an advanced directive for health care, a living will is a written document prepared in advance that directs an individual's physician to initiate continue, withhold, or withdraw life-sustaining medical treatment if the individual becomes irreversibly comatose, a permanent state of unconsciousness, or incompetent and terminally ill. You know, when I first arrived at the Senate, uh, in the Senate that first year, we had uh, a situation uh, surrounding Terry Scheibel. And uh, I remember how we adjourned with a unanimous agreement uh, that eventually allowed Congress to interject itself into that decision-making process of the families. Uh, it wasn't something I was comfortable with, uh, but it was not something that I stood on the floor and stopped. Uh, and I think that was a mistake, and I think the American people understood that that was a mistake. Uh, and as a constitutional law professor, I knew better. Uh, and so that's an example, I think, of, of where uh, inaction... This is the young woman with a feeding tube, and the family exactly. disagreed as to whether it should be removed or not. And I think that's an example of inaction, uh, and sometimes uh, that can be as costly as action. All parties in the case of Terry Schiavo agree that the situation would have been far less complicated had Terry had a living will. Gina, what is the process of creating a living will? Um, living wills are best done by a person's attorney. And as stated earlier, they're typically part of their estate planning uh, documents. Um, as mentioned earlier, the last will and testament, their trust document, the power of attorney will take care of their financial matters but the health care surrogate and the living will takes care of their personal matters as far as their health and uh, continuation of life. Was that Terry was motionless but aware, silent but emotionally responsive, a testament to the endurance and sanctity of human life. Actions are taken if someone does not have a living will. Um, again, preferable to have a living will. Typically when you have a person who is, I would say, in a bad car accident, in a coma, or elderly and having gone into the hospital or requiring additional health care, um, very often the hospital or the facility will ask for a living will, as well as doctors. Uh, their primary care physician will also ask for a living will. Um, in the absence of a living will, um, the, again, the family members have to make a decision um, as to whether or not to continue life or, you know, especially if they're in a coma, um, take away any kind of life support measures, whether that be ventilation or food. Because Terry was married to Michael and did not have a living will, the decision was put in his hands, not her family's, for her to live or die. If I saw you in heaven, I'll find my way. And what are more reasons for why a living will is very important? Because it helps family members know the um, patient or the person's uh, wishes as far as um, should they go into a coma, should their um, health become, you know, in, in a declining state, 
what their wishes are because if you do not have a living will um, then it's left up to family members to make that decision on their behalf. And what is your personal experience on this matter? My father had a stroke at age 61 and uh, at that time, that was uh, 20 years ago, um, living wills were not heard of to my knowledge. Um, and as a result of his stroke, he went into a coma and was on a ventilator. Um, because he did not have a living will, um, and because he was divorced from my mother, um, it was up to his children to make the decision uh, as to whether or not he should be uh, continue on life support. And while the hospital had a um, bioethics panel that the family, the family included his parents, my grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, and children to discuss, you know, what the best options were for him, um, it still remained very haunting when the when the decision was made to take him off of life support. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Heaven. Certain parts of the media do not take the case of Terry Schiavo as seriously and sympathetically as others. The following clip is an example of this. Terry's family has started a petition on their website called Enough is Enough to prevent negative connotations such as this from being a presentation of Terry's past state. I hate vegetables. <laughs> Don't worry about her, Mr. Shivo. She's being kept alive by medical science. Gee, look at all this stuff. How does it all work? Well, I'll tell you. This one keeps her liver clean. This one checks her pee. How about this one over here? Oh, that's just the TV. <laughs> this one checks her heart rate. This one checks her veins. And this dispenses gravy for her. Just unplug her. Terry Shivo is kind of alive. The most expensive plant you'll ever see. Greg Pang, executive director for Community Home Health and Hospice, stresses that advanced directedness and conversation between those over the age of 18 and family and loved ones can relieve the stressing question of what would they have wanted. Community Home Health and Hospice is a nonprofit community resource located in Vancouver for advanced planning. No cost appointments can be set up with a medical social worker by calling 360-253-4626.